again, uh, today uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about our upcoming game. But uh, before I do that, you know, kind of recap Saturday. Um, you know, it was a great win for our program. Um, as we talked about, it was a great opportunity for us to have the ability to play a ranked opponent here at home. And uh, very thankful for the, the, the student section that came out. You know, I thought we, they did a great job of creating an energy for us to, to get us off to a fast start. And, uh, you know, the fan support was, uh, was, was a big, big part of the fast start for us. And so we're very thankful for the people that came out to support us uh, in a big game. And again, as I told our team, was really proud of how they played. Um, very, very uh, happy with them understanding, you know, that uh, the consistency that you need to play with as we continue to try to create an identity as a program. You know, and with that being said, I also talked to our team that and, and hopefully, you know, our fans and everybody understands, I mean, we're on a journey right now as a program. Uh, we're at stop two of a, you know, a 12 day journey. And so if you look at it as a journey, you know, after two games, are we happy where we are? Well, of course we are. And I, I kind of said this to the team. I mean, it's like driving from California to DC and you hop in your car and, you know, day one and day two, you pull up and, you know, are we happy we're in Phoenix? Yeah, we didn't get a flat tire. We didn't have an accident, but it's still only day two of a 12 day journey, which means we got a lot of, of the trip left. And so we're happy where we're at, but we also understand that there's so much uh, more to the journey. And the next stop is this week against a, a really good Temple program that has played really tough. Um, you know, they pride themselves on Temple tough and you see it in the way they play and what we saw on tape. And, you know, I've gotten to know Coach Carey, you know, from his days at Northern Illinois. I know they'll be well coached. Uh, they've got some great players on the offensive side of the ball. The strength being the quarterback and two really big time wide receivers, along with some really big backs. Um, and then on the defensive side of the ball, they do a really good job having experienced defensive side uh, and, and they play what they play and they play really well. So, you know, again, you know, the thing we're trying to beat into the head of our players is that, you know, the, the success that we've had is, again, based off of us understanding the habits and behaviors it take, takes to go play and take advantage of the opportunity that we have. And we also know that because of, as we continue to create this identity and we continue on this journey, that we're gonna get everybody's best. I mean, we're not gonna sneak up on anybody uh, Temple, I'm sure, you know, because of how we've played the last two weeks, I'm sure we'll get the best version of Temple. And, you know, my job as the leader of the family is for them to get the best version of us, which we found that the recipe to us being able to play the way we played the past two weeks is the consistency of how we go about our work. And, you know, the consistency precedes the intensity. Everybody can get up to play a, a ranked opponent but now for us to be a successful program and build on it and continue on our journey without the adversity, we've got to have the consistency of what we do each week uh, to have the results that we want to get on Saturday. And, uh, you know, I'll end it with this and open it up to questions. Our captains for this week, um, Tyler Mabry on offense, uh, Keandre Jones on defense, and then Jake Funk on special teams. And uh, with that, I'll open it up to questions. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now, don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Coach, uh, it, for, for over the years, no matter how good or bad both the programs have been, Maryland's always gotten their best shot from Temple. What is it about the Owls that make them such a tough out over the years, and what have you noticed is different with the new coaching regime with Coach Kelly? Well, I think the big thing with them is just the mentality of the where they're located. I mean, much like how I like to take pride in being from the DMV and we're kind of one of those areas of the country that kind of keeps a chip on our shoulder that, 
you know, we're always fighting for anything we get. I think that, you know, those Philly born and bred, I think back to the boxers that are from the Philly era and how tough and hard nosed they are. And, you know, I think it's the temperament of that city. And I think they've embraced that toughness. And, you know, Rod Carey is a, a guy that's from the Mallory family tree that I know really, really well. And uh, I've seen his teams at Northern Illinois when I was, you know, at Illinois and having followed their program some. And they're always really well coached. They really play hard. And, you know, I think, uh, again, we're going to get the best version of Temple. Um, and a, a lot of it is because of us taking advantage of the opportunity with the last two weeks we've had. And, you know, with every opportunity, you know, comes adversity. And opportunity and adversity kind of go hand in hand. And uh, now the adversity we'll face because of us taking advantage of our opportunities are we're going to get everybody's best game. I mean, that very few people will show up and, kind of take us for granted, but it's because of what we've put on tape and how we've played the last two weeks. And our team has to understand to be able to continue to do that, we've got to have consistency. And that's the key to it. Mike, uh, since you got here, what have been your impressions of, of what Jake Funk has been able to do just to get back on the field and kind of building off something that, that Anthony McFarland said after the game Saturday? Has he been kind of a, a coach in that running back's room in addition to your regular coach? And how much do you kind of appreciate that as, as an old running back coach yourself? You know, one of my all-time favorite players, and I know you're not supposed to pick your children and say he's my favorite child, but you know Jake is one of those guys that it's hard not to, to, to really love and love hard because – He's going to give you every ounce of energy he has. You know, I can think back to, you know, when I took over as the interim in 2015, and one of the first things I did when I took over the job was call Jake Funk and offer him a scholarship because we had kind of been slow to offer him based on some philosophical things. But here's a guy that all-time leading rusher in the state of Maryland, won a bunch of ball games, and, you know, for whatever reason, wasn't as heavily recruited as the talent that I thought he had, and it was it's great to come back home now and have him be a part of it and just to see how he's grown in our program and just, you know, he, he may not be a marquee superstar name to, to you guys, but to us, he's a rock star because he's a guy that does just about everything from covering kicks and blocking punts to finishing games and, you know, catching the ball out of the backfield. He's just the epitome of what a, a Turk football player should be. And, I'm, you know, it's great to have a guy like Jake because, again, he's got a high football IQ. And when you look at that room, man, we've got a strong running back room. He's the one guy that, from a consistency standpoint, that shows up, and you know you're going to get 100% every time he steps out on the field. Can you talk about the value that Mabry has brought to this team and how well he fits into your scheme, both as an inline blocker and his uh, play down the field? Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, he and Josh and Keandre and, and Shaq, man, were guys that. I kind of targeted once they've gotten to the transfer portal. You know, I can think back, you know, Tyler visited Alabama after we had him here on an official visit. And, you know, Alabama offered him a scholarship, and we were very fortunate to, to, to get Tyler to, to buy into what we were selling and come here and take advantage of the opportunity. But, you know, he has a NFL body. Uh, he has the ability to, we like to call it, block the C area because, you know, with the defensive ends and some of the things we want to do in the run game, we're asking him to isolate and block some, some of the best players on the defensive side of the ball, defensive ends. And he's done that with a high level of uh, execution for us the past couple of games. And, you know, his work as a pass receiver and vertically down the field and being really reliable, you know, uh, it's been great to see from that position because that's a, a pivotal position in this offense, tight ends. And both he and Chig have done a, a really good job of uh, understanding what we want to do. And they've also been really versatile in that we do so many things with them, from lining them up in line, to lining them up in the backfield, to splitting them out wide. And, and these guys are really, you know, high football IQ guys that are taking advantage of the opportunities they're given. And Tyler, to me, has been a great addition uh, to our offense. You know, you have experience, you know, especially from being at Alabama, you know, being you know, part of a team with a you know number next to its name and you know those high expectations. What did you kind of you know take from Nick Saban about you know keeping the team grounded and you know even with that ranking? How are you then kind of like implementing that here now that you guys are ranked? Well, I think the biggest thing for us, and it goes back. I mean, we're in game two and the rankings really. I mean, this is like I said, we're happy where we're at at the second day of our journey. And if you look at our season as a 12-day season. I mean, it's still a lot of football left to be played. 
we realize what a great opportunity we have to be able to be ranked. But as I said, opportunity and adversity kind of go hand in hand. And there are going to be some adversity that we'll face. And it's how we embrace the how, how we embrace it, which will make the difference. And again, one of the things that we've created because of the consistency in which we've played the last couple of weeks in all three phases is that we're not going to sneak up on anybody and we're going to get everybody's best version, which we won if you're competitive. I mean, we're a competitive team and we want their best version. And again, our goal is to do the things Monday through Friday that allow us to be the best version of ourselves when we take the field on Saturday against a tough opponent. To your left in the back end. Hey coach, you were a play caller for Alabama. I mean, what stands out to you about Scott Montgomery's uh, ability as a play caller? I mean, have you been impressed with what he's done through two weeks? Been really impressed. I mean, Scotty has taken the system that we put in, and again, it's the system that I've run, and some of the things I've taken. I mean, nobody owns any of it. Um, this is Maryland's offense, not Mike Loxley's offense. But I've been really impressed with Scotty's ability to his pace, uh, having the next call ready. Um, the offensive staff, I mean, as everybody knows, it's a staff that helps shape the game plan. And I look at myself as part of the staff. I'm part of the process of putting together the game plan. But Scotty calls it 100% of the time. I make suggestions in between series. Uh, I'll make some suggestions during the course of a series. But, you know, as I used to say as a play caller, you know, the offense has to take on the personality of the play caller. And Scotty is a smart, smart guy. I like to joke about him being a Duke grad. and. That means he's the smartest guy in the room because he went to Duke and he, he loves that. But he's a good football coach. He's been around some really good coaches. Uh, you know, guy I have the utmost respect, uh, respect for him. David Cutcliffe is his mentor. And so, you know, we're really fortunate. I was very fortunate to be able to hire a guy like Scotty to run the system. And I've been really pleased with how he's called the games, how he's organized the offense, how he's taken a lot of things off of my plate, which you would expect because he's a former head coach. So, uh, you know, having Scotty Montgomery to me is like having a Mike Loxley on my staff, and I've been really pleased with Scotty, as well as all the offensive coaches as, and the defensive coaches for that matter. Um, Coach, uh, just an update on the health status of the team after the, uh, after the game last week, and specifically Olu and um, Marcus Minor, how they're going. Um, Olu has practiced, he practiced yesterday, so he's, he's a go. You know, Marcus is a, a little nicked up and he's questionable. Uh, he'll get a little bit of work today. We kept him out of yesterday's practice. We'll, we'll try to uh, bring him back slowly in the week. The plan is to practice him some today so that tomorrow he can be full return. But my expectation is that he'll play in the game on Saturday. You're right, Josh. Um, uh, you, you talked about it a little bit. Um, the big plays of secondary allowed. You talked about it a little bit. Um, Saturday, but after watching tape, just how much of that do you think is correctable just between the technique, the communication issues, and even some of the personnel? It looked like Syracuse had four or five wideouts. Sometimes you guys were in your base uh, packages. Yeah, no, we, I mean, most of the time we were in our nickel. Um, we didn't necessarily go dime. We don't play a lot of dime coverage. So our, our linebackers and our safeties are expected to be able to cover some tight ends and cover some slot receivers. Um, but just like you said, the, the big play, I think we gave up four explosive passes. And I said this on Saturday after the game and after watching the tape. I mean, they're all correct, correctable mistakes. I mean, and it was more fundamental than it was anything. I mean, I look at Tino's deep ball that he had caught on him down the right sideline. And, and he was in great position. He wound up looking back for the ball too early, too long, and lost uh, the relationship and the phase you'd like to have to be able to play the ball at the end of the play. You know, some of the communication errors are things that we're going to continue to have to just hammer home with our secondary and the back end guys. You know, like I said, you know, Jordan Mosley is not a talkative guy. Um, you know, and, and he's got to do some things communication wise to get everybody on the same page. But all the all the big plays that we we gave up, the explosive plays were self inflicted. Um, not to take anything away from what Syracuse did, um, because they got good players and they did some good things scheme wise. But they were most mostly fundamental errors that we got to get corrected throughout the course of our uh, practice week and, and go out and get it executed on Saturday. Coach, uh, what's been the feedback, or have you felt any positive vibe from the students, or you know, the campus here? And what about uh, some of the alumni, uh, maybe giving you some encouragement and uh, back slapping after this two and zero start? Yeah, I mean, we've got we've had a lot of people that have. Uh, um, have reached out um, and 
very deserving. Um, we're happy as a team to be able to uh, make our supporters and our, our fans and our students set, uh, students on campus uh, feel good about our program. Um, you know, I think it's our job to put a product on the field that they will be excited about supporting. And, and, and there's no doubt, you know, from where we are, where we were and where we are, um, as I said, we're happy with where we are in day two of the journey, but still a long, long trip. And, uh, you know, this week is going to be really important for us to really hone in on the reason we've had the success that we've had is just being consistent about how we do our business. And that consistency is the, the key to this deal. Coach, John Hope spoke about continuing to bring a pressure defense. We got to talk to him a few months ago. Uh, with Shaq being out, Bryce Brand stepping in, how do you rate what your pressure is and how well did uh, Bryce do at his start at Russia? Um, you know, that's who we're going to be on defense. We want to be an aggressive defense. I'm not a bend, don't break, and play off kind of guy. I kind of want to get after people. And the things that gave us and gave me problems as a play caller are the things that I wanted as a defensive uh, philosophy. And that's to attack and switch your looks up and keep the offense off balance. And John has done a great job of giving me what I want from a philosophical standpoint and has done a great job, like I said with Scotty, of organizing the defense running it, uh, really taking a lot of things off my plate in terms of how he manages that side of the ball. And, uh, you know, Bryce Brand has, has, has been a, like everybody in our program. We continue, we're a developmental program. We're going to continue to develop all the players in our program to be able to do what Bryce did, having to step in for Shaq, which is to go out and perform your job and do it well. And, you know, I was pleased with Bryce's play, minus the, the you know, the five-yard penalty for offsides. and. You know, the thing that, you know, you don't get to see that we see is that that's what I've seen out of Bryce, you know, from summer camp till now, that he's continued to develop, develop the right kind of habits and behaviors, which afforded him the opportunity to go out and play the way he played on Saturday. Is Shaq, is Shaq coming back this week? That's the plan. I have time for two more. Coach, you talked throughout the spring about Keandre Jones' leadership, and now to see him produce on the field in the way he has, uh, what does that do, you know, for you knowing him and uh, for the whole defense? Again, uh, not, I'm not surprised, and I think the people within our program aren't surprised with what we're seeing out of Keandre uh, from a production standpoint because he does it in practice. I mean, he is one of those guys that practices like his hair's on fire, and you know, he will give you every ounce of energy that he has and effort that he has, and that's the type of player he's been since I've seen him as an eighth grader till now. And uh, the leadership part is the piece that really has been helpful. And I keep stressing, you know, all these grad transfers that we've added have just brought a different mentality uh, to the rest of our team. And not that we didn't have leaders already in our program, but, you know, you always talk about success leaving clues. And, and these guys have been a part of some successful programs. And you've got young players. You know, we are a young team still. And we're still in, you know, year one of laying a foundation as a program and to have the caliber of leadership that guys like Tyler Mabry, Josh Jackson, Keandre, Shaq, that they bring to the table for our young players, just by emulating what they do and what they see is so, so, so important as you start developing a culture. And again, Keandre's played a huge role in flipping the culture of how we practice. I mean, that's the key to this deal, how we practice Monday through Friday so that we can go out and play at the level that we play with on Saturdays. Coach, how kind of piggybacking off of that, how gratifying is it to see a lot of these new parts, be it you as the first year coach, these transfers coming in, the time that you've had together, and to see the success so far, certainly just part of the journey, but you know, to know that all these pieces, all the hard work so far have come together, I don't know, maybe even exceeded expectations as all these new parts come together. Yeah, I mean, to, to us, and, and I ask our team this often, I mean, on Monday, I asked our team, is anybody surprised with what we're doing? And nobody raised their hand. And it's not because, you know, that our expectations are low, high, or indifferent. It's just because we've really all bought into, if we do things the right way, Monday through Friday, and practice with the intensity that we have, that we have to, and, you know, have the right kind of habits and behaviors and, and everything. I mean, even off the field, when we talk to our guys about going to class on time, and 
doing all the little things, hydration, eating the right stuff. You know, today's going to be a hot day. Last Wednesday, I thought we kind of fell off in the middle of practice because it was hot. And they know that Tuesday is going to be a rough day and Wednesday is going to be a rough day. So I've got to take care of my body so that I can get in the work I need to get in to be able to play well on Saturday. And because of the success we have, it validates that, hey, we're doing some things the right way Monday through Friday. And it's easy to buy in when they see it. But again, we're in day two of a 12-day journey, and we've got a lot of a lot of land to cover from now until we get to day 12. And we're happy with where we are after two weeks. Thank you, Coach. Thank you very much. Right, I'm Josh Jackson up here in front, front of the backdrop. Mark, I'm playing back at the end. Got another recorder. Anybody? I think it's driver. Is that your recorder? Oh, never mind.